God of praise. Come on and bless his name. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can do better than that. Come on.
to the righteous church of God service. We are welcome all of you that are here in the sanctuary. We send greetings to all of you that are joining with us by means of social media. We are delighted to have you worship with us. God is good. It's been a great week. God has been blessing us, have been blessing us, is blessing us. We came today just to give the Lord some praise and give the Lord some thanksgiving because without him, we would be nothing. And we are so delightful for his presence and for his goodness. Don't know about you all, but through the week and sometimes, maybe in this past year or so, we have experienced ups and downs. But how many really know through it all, God has given us peace? Through it all, God has given us victory. Through it all, he's given us stamina. Through it all, he reassured us with the promises that he's with us and he promised never to leave us. So today, we rejoice in the very presence and the power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's good to be alive today. We'd like to once again thank you for sharing with us in our virtual service, realizing that you have many options, but thank you for stopping by today. Want to once again let you know that you're invited to share with us every Tuesday, our Bible study is 6.45 p.m. right here, RCG Facebook Live. We are in the book of Job. We're um, in session number four, and we're looking forward to you all joining in with us. Notes and outlines are available to you. If you go to our website, drop us a line. Give us your email address. We'll be delighted to see the notes and outlines of not only this Bible study, but even the ones in the past. So thank you so much for sharing in the Bible study. Our Thursday night Bible study also continues via Zoom. Those details you will find on the website as well. While you're on the website, just go to the donate page. And we'd like to thank all of you in advance right now for all of your gifts of love all of the tithes, all of the offerings, those that give be a givelify, those that mail their donation to the church, we appreciate you so much. Those that give via the RCG mobile app or whether you give through the online, via the internet, however you give, we are just so delighted that you're sharing and support of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want to commend all of you and let you know your gifts are so much appreciated so that we can continue the work of Christ. Never think your gift is too small. Never think your gift is too little. Always remember, there's a willing heart, and that's what God accepts. But the Lord has been really good and blessed us even now in this pandemic season. While we're still able to have our income, we want to make sure we honor God with the resources that he continues to give us and provides for us. As we pray now for the gifts of love, we want to particularly pray for persons that have suffered income loss because of this season, that God will strengthen and allow your income to continue, allow your employment to continue. And if you're in between blessings, I normally say that. Some persons are in between employment. I say in between blessing, that God will let you know that he has you and he promised to take care of us. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for these gifts of love. Thank you for the persons that give, persons that are sowing into the kingdom of God. We want you to know, God, we are so appreciative. Many persons we don't know by name, some we don't even, we've not seen by their faces, but yet they're blessed by your word. And we thank you for their contributions to the ministry. We thank you, God. Now, we bless you. We pray, God, that you will bless them, their household, that you will reward them for the faithfulness and giving, God. We appreciate it so much. Now, God, bless those that have suffered loss. Bless those, oh God, that desire to give but have not. But all that's given will be used for the upbuilding of the kingdom of God. And we praise your name. And we thank you for everything and all that you've given us. In the name of Jesus, we realize all that we have is a blessing from you. So we come cheerfully sowing into the ministry that you've allowed us to sow into. In the name of Jesus, be with us now. Bless gift and giver. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And once again, we appreciate you for your faithful giving. Those that are in the sanctuary today, certainly you can, on your exit, 
can have your opportunity to give here in worship today. As our praise team continues further in worship, we're looking for the Lord to bless and speak to us today. We thank God for all that he has done. God has been mighty good to us. I feel in my spirit that God is going to move and God is going to heal today. God is going to lift the burden off of somebody's back. God is going to make a way, not because of what we say, but because of the Holy Spirit and how he continues to minister to us. I love this particular song. I give myself away. If we give ourselves to the Lord, if we give ourselves to the Lord, he will have his way with us and fill us with his power. Come on and carry us further in worship.
your music. face of forgiveness. If you could look at Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, beginning at verse 17, we'll give you a minute to catch up with us on your device, your Bible, wherever media you have. Romans chapter 12, verse 17. I'm going to read it in the NIV version. It says, do not repay anyone evil for evil. And that sounds difficult. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. I'm reading Romans chapter 12, now verse 18 from the NIV version. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. Yeah, right. <laughs> if he is thirsty, 
give him drink. We don't want to give him nothing poisonous. Give him water. And in doing so, you will keep burning coals on your head. Do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. I, that passage in there, the face, what does forgiveness look like? What does forgiveness look like? Now, just last night, there was a blind minister that walked 400 miles from Columbus, Ohio, to Washington, D.C. Two weeks, and it culminated last night in Washington, D.C. A God-fearing man, Pastor Jonas Christian. And the reason why he walked, because he wanted to show what forgiveness looks like. He was dressed in a black track suit, a black t-shirt, black tennis shoes, and a white hat. He was 70 years old. And he pastored in Ohio. The journey took two weeks, almost 400 miles, and it was a part to show the world what forgiveness is all about. Now, he's the pastor of Adoration and Peace Baptist Church. He's the pastor now. He's the pastor of, of Adoration and Peace Baptist Baptist Church and he has an organization called the Face of Forgiveness. Now the reason why he walked 400 miles is because 20 years ago, and this was the anniversary and that's why he did it, he was involved in a car accident that actually changed his life and caused him to lose his eyesight. He's blind. So July 2001, he was driving home on I-70 after attending a granddaughter's uh, situation in Pierre, Illinois. Watch this. When a four-pound Candle-sized rock crashed through his windshield. He was going under an overpass of a rock about the size of a cantaloupe, was thrown over, hit the windshield, shattered in his face, cut him up severely. They thought he was not going to make it. Six months later, he underwent 10 operations to reconstruct his face. Doctors had to rebuild his sinus passages so that he could breathe without a trachea tube and they used a bone graft to fashion a new nose. You got to get this picture. I saw it. This person is now no eyes, a reconstructed nose, scars in the top of his head. He's totally blind, but he walks 400 miles. And he wants person to see his face because his face is a face of forgiveness. The person who threw the rock 16-year-old was sentenced to 12 years in prison for attempted murder and vandalism. I know somebody say, well, what ethnicity was he? I'll tell you in a minute. 
His name was Jacob McNary. And he went on to serve 12 years, still in prison right now. But Christian, this person, this person, John is Christian, he said, I forgive McNary for his crime. And he visited him in Madison Correctional Institute. Can't see, head all marred, no eyes, reconstructed, and he actually has a cane. So while walking, he had persons to walk with him, and they culminated last night. He wrote a book called The Face of Forgiveness. He's saying, let me tell you what forgiveness looks like. Look at my marred face. Look at what somebody did to me. And no matter what they've done to me, I forgive this person. He said, when I forgave Jacob, the white fella, it changed my life. He says, it allowed me to look on the brighter side of life and not the downside. He says, some people look at my blindness as a curse. I have learned to embrace it and receive it as a blessing. He's still in the area right now, and if you were to Google his face or look for the article, you will see his face, and he is saying, my face is what forgiveness looks like. How do you forgive someone that intentionally threw a rock into the windshield that caused all that damage to this pastor? And then somebody says, well, why? Couldn't it have been somebody else? And this author goes on and says, no, it had to be me because I had to be an example of the message that we talk about, about being and able to forgive. So all of his looks, when you look at him, and his book is called The Face of Forgiveness. And I want to ask us today, really sure, what does forgiveness look like to you. In Romans chapter 12, we just read it. It says Romans chapter 12, never pay back evil for evil. If somebody does something wrong to you, Paul says, don't pay back. Don't overcome evil with evil. Uh, let me take a little closer. I don't know how to say this, I'm just going to say it. If somebody walked up to you, here we go. Be sanctified and saved. And somebody just walks up to us and, and I'm going to just say this. And, and, and they try to take your car or try to snatch your child and, and you standing there. How do you apply this verse? I'm just going to tell you right now. We're going to say, excuse me, Lord. Excuse me one second. And then the side of us that we thought was under control, the side of us that we now supposed to yield to the Spirit, if we're not careful, if we're not careful, we will actually become undignified and ungodly. Am I right about it? Yeah, yeah. The truth be told, because when the level comes to attack us, the real side of us shows up more quickly than the spiritual side. So before we begin to go into some unknown language to this person, before we go into some sort of rage to bring back what we thought was buried, we got to say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, give me fresh grace because we don't want to be found in prison trying to protect what somebody's taken away. 
So we can't overcome evil with evil. We just can't, we just, we just can't do it. And I know that's easy talking. It's easy saying. But when somebody is doing you is evil, it could be anything. Scandalizing your name, talking about you, running you down, talking about your kids, talking about your family. It may not be evil to them, but it's evil to you and it's hurting your feelings and your spirit. The Bible says don't be evil. Don't do evil for evil. Why? Because verse 18 says, revenge does not promote peace. If we take revenge ourselves, then we are not, we are escalating the situation. It says, be at peace with all men. Because verse 19 says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. But here's the, the point. He says he's going to repay. But when? When? I, I, I'm still hurting from whatever situation was. He says, I will repay. But meanwhile, we got to let God do what God does best. He said, vengeance is mine. You can go all the way back to Genesis. When Cain killed Abel, God put a mark on Cain. And whoever saw that mark on Cain, that person would know you are not to take revenge on Cain. I put the mark on him to identify him so you can know what he did, but also for you not to take revenge on him. Because God is going to get the revenge. You cannot bother the people of God. You cannot continue to harass Christians. You cannot continue to take stuff from persons that don't like us. If we are true Christians, we've got to grow to the place where we can have our old self to stay submerged and allow God to take revenge on our enemy. It may not be next week or next month, but the Bible says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, and I will repay. Somebody today is still upset with something and you're plotting and scheming. I've got to get even with him or her. They shouldn't have done this. They, well, maybe they shouldn't. But you know what? If you give it to the Lord, the Lord will take revenge and he will satisfy you. And when the Lord gets the revenge, you can sit back and you can say, look at God. He'll fight your battles for you. He'll make your enemies your footstool. We've got to remember, we can't get involved in the fight. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. In 1221, you, you can't overcome evil with, with evil. We can't take revenge. I know it's easy talking, but we can't pay back evil. It's, 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 it motivates, it makes the situation worse. Besides, it doesn't honor our merciful God. We've got to let persons know I'm a child of God. Now, if they do us wrong, now, we can give them a sanctified piece of your mind. You can let them know, look, I'm not no pushover. Yeah, you know, you're not going to do that to you. are going to respect me. But to act and do evil against them, that's what God is going to do. He has a way of making sure that those that do you wrong, because what you've done to the least of these, my little one, you've done it unto God. And that's what, so we're children of God. He's our Father. He's protecting us. And he'll make sure that any harm done to us, as long as we don't do evil for evil, God is going to work it out. Have you ever had something happen to you? You didn't act on it. It may have been years later. But you look back and you say to yourself, Oh my goodness. God finally took care of that situation. It could have been a 
It could, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know call a name. It could be a supervisor. It, it could be anything. It could be some, I, I don't know, you know. When it, when it all, when it all fall out, when, it, when it everything settled down, when the dust cleared and the smoke settled, you were still standing. And all of the enemies got whisked away. They got the pink slip. They got the demotion. They lost, but you still won. Why? Because God had your back. And we got to always remember vengeance is mine. Don't take vengeance, and I'm going to get real personal. Don't take vengeance on your children. All right. Don't take vengeance on your spouse. They may or may not be wrong. I'm not going to get into right and wrong. We all have ups and downs, but you cannot do evil for evil. If you give it to the Lord, God promised, revenge is mine. He says, I will repay. Because the right response is something that we have to do. Paul says in 12, 17, respect which is right in the sight. Live peaceably with all men. Then he goes on to say, the enemy's hungry, thirsty. You mean the one that did me wrong? The one that bashed me? You telling me now I got to feed him after the wrong he did to me? After how he hurt me? Did evil to you? You're telling me if he's hungry, I got to give him some bread? You telling me he wanted to rob me? And now, and now, I got to give him some water? Come on, work with me, saints. <laughs> work with me. You know and I know. We're still working with this verse. We're still trying to internalize it. We're still trying to grow. Some people say, Pastor, I hear you, but I'm not there yet. Praise God for your honesty. But, but when you look at it, the Bible tells us, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And I like 18, if possible, be at peace with all men. No matter what happens, be at, be at peace. And what happens in this particular passage, this brother was at peace with his face being all marred. And he wanted to show the world, this is what happened to me. But I forgave the brother. And now I want the world to see what forgiveness looks like. I can't get my face back. I can't get my eyes back. My nose is all jacked up. I'm totally blind. I have a walking stick. I still have a church and a ministry. But this is, I don't hold a grudge against this brother. It was like in Atlanta, I forget when it was, when they came in and they shot the, the people in prayer service and some of the survivors said, we forgive them. You see, when you forgive, the burden comes off of you. When you say, I forgive, God gives you a level of peace. You can rest at night. You don't have to plot or plan trying to get revenge. All I'm saying today, what does the face of forgiveness looks like. Why was Jesus' face marred beyond human likeness? Why was he abused? Why did they strike his face, pull his hair, beat him in his face? The Bible said he was so disfigured that we couldn't even recognize him. And when we looked at why and what the face of forgiveness looks like, when we looked at our Savior and his defigured face and all that he went through, his face to us is a face of forgiveness. Why? Because I am taking all the sins of mankind. The evidence is in my face. When you look at me, you see I'm marred, you see I'm beat, but I will not say a word. I will take the abuse. And when we see the marred face of Christ, we see forgiveness. Why? Because he was marred that we may 
can be set free. He went to Calvary so that we can have eternal life. He was marred so that we don't have to be marred. His face was disfigured. And when I look at his face, I say he took what should have been us. But now he took it. We don't have to be marred. He who knew no sin became sin for us. He is the face of forgiveness because when he got up from the grave, the old face that was marred was a new face. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but when we see him, we're going to see him like he is. We're going to see a disfigured face. We're not going to see a messed up face. We're not going to see a marred face. We're going to see a shining, glorious face that says, I am Alpha and Omega. They messed me up, but my father took revenge on Satan. He's no longer in charge. My God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all the other ask for me. Give the fight to God. Let God fight your enemy. He will. Yes, he will. He'll make your enemies your footstool. And the face of forgiveness, the face of forgiveness looks like this. Hmm. God took care of you. Hmm. You don't have to have a jacked up face to prove. You know, sometimes I'm a close, sometimes you can look at somebody's face. You can look at their countenance. You really, and you can say, you forgive me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you really forgive me? Mm -hmm. It's in your face. It's in your face. It's the way we look, the way we act, the way we talk. It's our countenance. Do you forgive me? I'm going to pray about it. What are you going to pray about it for? <laughs> the Bible already says forgive. Are you praying? You want God to give you an answer not to forgive? Our expressions dictate the face of forgiveness. And I'm so glad that God, even though he was disfigured, when I see his face and what he went through, I see forgiveness for me. I see forgiveness for you. Because he went through, he was the spirit. He was crucified, he was marred. Why? Because he wanted us to know we were forgiven. And when we see what he went through, we ought to be able to give, forgive others. Forgive us this day, our daily bread. Give us, and forgive those. Forgive those persons that trespass against you. Maybe today, out in social media land, you, you have a situation you just can't let go. It, it happened. It's over. It's done. Maybe it was years ago, and you can't let go. It's all over your face. It's all over your praise. You can't even worship. You can't even get in the Bible. You're not even friendly anymore. You say you forgave, but your actions in your face tells me you're still holding on. I want to tell you today to turn it over to God. When you turn it over to God and you say something like, Lord, I've been carrying this for a long time. I'm still hurt because of what happened. Help me to forgive and rescue me from myself. When you can get forgiveness of yourself, God will lift the burden from your past. He'll lift the burden in your relationship. Somebody's got to say, I'm sorry. And when forgiveness sets in, God will give you peace. And God will give you joy. And God will restore your relationship. He'll give you a new face, a new look, a new song, a new praise, a new worship. And then you can say, look at me. I don't look like what I've been through. Why? Because God first forgave me. Now I can forgive somebody else. Let it go. You got ulcers. Let it go. Blood pressure. Let it go. Because we don't want to forgive. The face of forgiveness looks good, 
when we let somebody else know they are forgiven. The door of the church is open today. What does the face of forgiveness look like? John is Christian. You can read the article. His face, when you look at his face, you're like, oh my goodness. If somebody did that to me, what would you do? He said in the quote in the paper, I forgive this brother. And now he's spreading and walking, telling everyone as a nation we need to learn to forgive. His message is stop holding grudges. Learn to forgive. So what? It pains a lot. But if you let it go, God will give you peace. He'll put a song in your heart. He'll put joy in your spirit. Come on, somebody. Let it go. Maybe you want to go home today and pray. Lord, help me to forgive. Help me to tell somebody they are forgiven. Help me to mean it when I say it. And when you tell them, baby, I forgive you. Pray that you have the right words. Pray that you have the right tone. Pray that God will put you at the right time. So when you say you are forgiven, the person receiving it will feel your forgiveness. And God will honor your honesty because you say, Lord, I give it over to you. Stop trying to fight every demon. Let the Lord take care of it. And then he'll put a new face on you. Maybe you've never done that before, but challenge yourself. I want to tell the person. You say, well, I'm waiting for them to tell me. No. You say, Lord, help me to forgive them. God will give you the right words, the right time, the right spirit. Then I can get away with it because business is mine, saith the Lord. The door of the church is still open. Maybe you don't have a church home today. Go to our website. Say, I don't have a church home. We'll pray with you. Give you some material. Help you to find a place in a church to worship in your area. Because it's not about building up our church. It's about finding persons a place to worship that can grow. And finally, if you've never accepted Christ, consider doing it today. Get the load off of you. God wants to take the burden. And then you'll have a face that looks like you've been given. God will give you a smile. I've been redeemed. God bless you. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Find somebody. Tell them that you love them. Tell them that you forgive them. Tell them that God has revenge. God will take revenge. Then you begin to walk in your anointing. You begin to walk in the faith of God. Because he that begun a good work in you. Hallelujah. He will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. Walk in your anointing. Believe God. Forgive. And God will bless your life. Tell him, God bless you. See you Tuesday and next Sunday.